Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we visited some places in the Reach. I think we went from New Winchester to Carillon to Lustrum, and then finally the Nature Reserve. Something like that. Just doing some things that I can do in the Reach before heading back to Albion. And at the end of the last episode, I just arrived at the Nature Reserve, so let's do some stuff here. Join a hunting party as always, but not really. Explore the Nature Reserve on my own. Reduce terror. Let's get a port report. Let's give the researcher a crap ton of stuff. Oh, uh, Albert's Idol. Yeah, into the reserve. Take a quick trip with them as our guide. Got two sky stories. Thank you. Should have a ton to turn in. Wings of a chorister bee. 300 sovereigns. Ants from a homestead. 300 sovereigns. Stomach of a cantankery. 250. Titanium cutting. 250. Fungal crinoline from a mushroom meteoroid. 300. Mandrake from Trader's Wood. 300. And with that, I think I'm rich. <laughs> um, is there anything more we can do with them? Ask about the romantic ornithologist bird. Is there still nothing new with that? Nope. That still stayed the same. The Phlegmatic Researcher's private project. That's the delivering the flyers about the uh, evil of Apollonian cinders, right? Yes. Okay, nothing more to do there. Now I've got 6,000 sovereigns. God, remember when I first came in uh, to the Reach from Albion the last time? After buying a new ship and new weapons and all the uh, all the smuggling stuff. And I, I think I had like around a thousand sovereigns and now I have six thousand. I can't remember if I had any quests here. I think it was just turning in research, wasn't it? Yeah. You have any deals? Ooh. Nectar. I don't think I want to take that, because I'm about to go to Titania next. There's a lot of bees there. Yeah. Let's not do that. Okay, over to Titania. We've arrived at Titania. The bees, the bees. Oh god, is it happening again? Yeah, they're being attacked again. Sentries run through the streets, heralding doom's approach. All prophets who proclaimed the Ancress's gospel of all shall be well will be hiding in their homes until long after the attack. Rally to Titania's defense, this time 100% chance of success. Silence in the space of half an hour. The Corister Hive fills the air with stingers and song. The Titanians resist as best they can. Once the Hive has collected its nectar, and the Titanian's home is ravaged, it leaves again for the further parts of the Reach. Lost a crew, gained a nectar. What's a tendon art exhibition? That should reduce terror. Oh, wait. Encourage a visitor to invest in Titania. Never mind, let's do this. A few brave art lovers from Albion are wandering the exhibits. The Endless Wallets of Aristocracy. Although the prospect of advancing the cultural excellence of Titania doesn't do much for his lordship, the mention of enduring prestige and big plaque for the donors does. You leave him negotiating the power of his pocketbook with the Rhapsodic Mayor. Let's get a port report. Assist. Assist with port repairs. The port seems a little damaged from recent Corister Hive attacks. Current port damage, 10%. Oh yeah, that's not much. Pay for all port repairs. I just 10 sovereigns, that's nothing. I guess that's one sovereign per percent that you uh, reduce its damage. <clears throat> Alright, request a cutting of a petal, since I just 
delivered it to the nature reserve so we can get more. Okay, back to the main square. Ah, right, the sky stories. I have 22. I could do with getting rid of some. 17 visions of the heavens. Don't want to get rid of a moment of inspiration. I'll get rid of some of the visions of heaven, though. Just one for 70 sovereigns? It's pretty good. I think we've done all these before, at least once, so I'm not going to read them. But I'll do that a couple times. And then, I don't know, five sky stories? I have 22? Yeah, I'll give them five sky stories. All right, the Midnight Rose. Let's go visit the Ethereal Apiarist. Mm, we've already been here. Um, that's bollocks about the whole thing. Uh, about artists believing they must suffer. Uh, that doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Ah, uh, we have to visit here. This is where the uh, actual real smuggling stuff happens. And as I was hoping, they do have different items. So not every, uh, not every, like, smuggling port sells the same possible things to put in your ship. So at least one new one. And, of course, the export specialty, Firkin of Red Honey. And they also have prospects for it, right? Smuggling prospects available, yes. Red Honey for the Empyrean. I'm not going there anytime soon. Red Honey to the Mausoleum. I am going there soon. Five firkins of red honey. Well, let me see how much space I'm going to have. Let's, uh, let's see exactly what these are, because I only have four hold space right now from my two concealed cavities. Cabinet of Curiosities. Appears to be a heavy, ornate case to display the trophies you've claimed on your travels. In fact, it is riddled with secret compartments, ideal for hiding contraband. Okay, so that can give me a bonus too. It would go in place of this. Hmm, so I'd lose quite a bit of people, but I mean, that's fine. That's not that big of a deal. I'd be running on eight people. My ship's minimum running is... Hmm. Where is the minimum running? I figured this out like 10 hours ago, 20 hours ago. Is it at the bottom of here? Is it in possessions? It's somewhere weird. Yes, it's in possessions at the bottom. Your train. Minimum safe banding number is six. And I'd be at eight. Was it? Uh. Four? No, so I'd, I'd be at ten. Yeah, we'd be fine. And this I can't get. I need fails at 75 plus. Oh, that's so good. Six quarters and two hidden compartments. That's the first tier four item I've ever seen. I've only seen tier 3 at the highest. 75 veils. I'm pretty high off from that. Or pretty high off. Pretty far away from that. So let's grab the cabinet of curiosities. I can just pop it in and lose some of my people when I need the space. Do that right now, in fact. Sorry, people. Right, so it was five frickins of red honey. Oh, I can't hold that. Did I grab the prospect? No, there we go. Let's go ahead and sell some of the cheapest thing that I have right now to make room. Three fuel? I'll be fine with three fuel left over. Yeah, we're so close to New Winchester. So with that, we have the space for the five firkins of red honey. Excellent. I mean, like, if I have another hold space, should I just take it? No. Because the more you have, the higher the risk. I think. Yeah, let's just go with the five. Can I store... <laughs> can you store smuggling goods in the bank? Would the bank ta take them? Like, that seems a little risky to put illegal stuff in the bank. Okay. Yeah, alright. Let's... Go off to the circus. We have a quest to do there, actually. Oh, right. I'm going to have to fight my way out of here. 
because I have some coarser nectar on board. I could get rid of it, but ah, I don't want to. Let's get a pristine pair of wings. I love this weapon so much, and this ship. Strip the engine for materials. Yeah, let's get back up to full health. Oh, there's another one waiting around the corner. Well, guess what? My rocket can curve. Captain's cabin. Juicy gossip. At the circus now. New arrivals. Let's go listen to their stories to reduce our terror. It's at zero percent now. Let's get a port report. Oh, actually, free tickets first. Poor report. No reason to attend anything, I think, because well, there's no reason to visit the amusements to reduce my terror, because it's already at zero percent. I think visiting a performance might actually give me stories and stuff. Yeah, four sky stories, a vision of the heavens. That's really good. And you can only do that once each visit, because of course there isn't just back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back performances. Okay. Oh, I came here for Angel. That was the quest thing, but I forgot I need a carefully packed creative munitions. I don't suppose you have it as a deal, do you? No. Okay, well, it's a quick little jaunt back to Winchester to grab some. Alright, came back from New Winchester with my carefully packed crate of munitions for Angel the Demolition Rat. The Bombardier Rat has set up a tiny tent in the shadow of the obelisk. He works as a fire breather for the circus. He wants a leaving due before he'll join you. Gonna set up some fireworks and stuff? <laughs> Go for it. Wait, no, that's not the button. It increased my terror. Off of the bang, and several other bangs. Angel's powder blackened face lights up when he sees the rat brigade. His whiskers are burnt away, but his eyes are bright as diamonds. Look what the cat dragged in, he grins. Angel listens to your offer, then immediately divulges his number. Let's go. I've been dreaming about blowing up. Cinders frowns him to silence. Oh, well, uh, I want in on any revenge, anyway. The party is memorable. You almost die. Twice. The ringmaster demands the rats never return. The rat brigade considers it a marvelous success. Gain five terror. Yeah, now she's got to speak with him again. Is that all the parts of the account number they need? No. Petronella explains the situation while she empties the chambers of Cinder's Derringer for polishing. So that lieutenant, what shivved us in the back at a critical juncture in return for a cushy position with the Windward Company, right? Yeah, Sarge gave him a number two. That is a number T-O-O, -O, not number two like shit. <laughs> Didn't know he was a bad one. Eh, Any anyway, row, the lieutenant's got a plum off at Port Prosper. We're gonna have to get in. And get his number and get out. Preferably doing him in on the way. Sounds good. Hopefully it involves some explosions. Hear the end of Sarge's story from Petronella and Albrecht. What happened on that last mission? He's brought wine. She's brought scotch. It could have worked, Albrecht says mournfully, but the lieutenant had taken a contract of his own. Something, something, Windward Company? Uh, first we knew of it was when the company fired on their own engine. The governor was already well away on another locomotive. Sarge went down first, bellowing for the rest of us to scarper the daft 
Uh, this bastard, right? Bastard? Yeah, I think so. Petronella adds. Next thing we know, half of us are dead and the lieutenant's got a fancy new title with the Windward Company. Wait, so what happened? It's hard to read through this accent. The lieutenant had taken a contract of his own. Vise, oh, with the Vise Windward Company. First we knew of it was when the company fired on their own engine. I see. In bed with a Windward Company. Blah. Right. I need to see if there's anything left to do here other than go to Port Prosper and go back home. I don't think so. Homestead? Trade gossip for supplies. Oh, right. Always gotta be the ants. Hello, Dreadnought. Let's help this tackity out. the hold sheaf of papers i know what that is ministry stamp permit oh no it's not new money violet notes printed in london displaying victoria seated at her throne of hours on the face in the hml parzival the first london locomotive to fare the skies on the on the reverse Read the hold again. Fasted decanter. Two rolls of thirsty bombazine. Those are worth a lot. At Word Prosper. Just got a port report. Let's join the Lamas Fair, which we've done before. Run of the crew of East Enders. Uh, gain four uncanny specimens. It's so good. Deliver pamphlets about the dangers of Apollonian cinders. Alright, so what were we supposed to do here exactly? Ooh, I'll take this bargain. Three crates of munitions. Ah, I'm supposed to infiltrate the Windward Company factory. Okay. Oh, here it is. It's under Explore. Sneak into the Windward Company with the Rat Brigade. Costs 300 sovereigns. That's easy. It's occasionally open for the edification of the paying public. Slipping away from a tour of the factory will be easier than breaking in. On tour. The hour of the factory visit arrives. Your sleeves quiver with excited rats, <laughs> but in the jostle of goppers, busybodies, stakeholders, and hangers-on, no one notices. The wrought iron gates, with their cheery motif of butterflies, swing open. A sharp-smiled company forewoman is on hand to lead the tour. Inside is an orderly purgatory of wheels, spindles, and great creaking looms. Steam smoke and the crystalline gleam of cracked hours makes visibility poor. Your sleeves squeak impatiently. There are guards watching the workers. There are guards watching the machinery. Valuable if dismantled, disastrous if sabotaged. There are guards watching the upper doors and in the private offices of the company board. Still, they can't watch everywhere. After only a few minutes, you've identified the door to the lieutenant's office. 
The little rat hole cut into the bottom of the door gives it away. Aww. Oh yeah, we can blow open the doors to the lieutenant's office. I knew we could use Angel for this job. But that's kind of loud. So, force our way in, sneak in, or blow it open. Man, sneaking, only 63% chance of success. Oh, and I need a, I needed munitions to do this, which I have, because I bought them at the bargain. I'm really lucky that I did that, actually. Sharp squeaks from your left sleeve convey that Petronella wants to know why you aren't getting, uh, just getting on with it. Yeah, let's blow it open. Boom. You have a cart of explosives and a team of trained sabotage rats. Let the Windward Company tremble before you. There's not much left of the door. Or the wall. In the suddenly revealed office, both a parsimonious chairman and an elderly rat blink at you in surprise. The elderly rat blinks several times. Cinders? I was wondering when this day would come. His voice quavers like an unfortunate flute solo in a school concert. My dear chairman, I advise that you do not move or even blink for the duration of this interview, or I suspect someone might do something unpleasant. The lieutenant turns his attention back to you. Before you do anything, I have one thing to say. Okay, I'm listening. Cinder's derringer is aimed squarely at the elderly rat's face. The parsimonious chairman moves to add a half lump of sugar to his tea, but thinks better of it. A last minute confession. The lieutenant cowers before her. It wasn't me, he squeaks. Cinder's blinks. You what? The words pour from him. I knew Sarge was up to something. Covert meetings, solitary reconnaissance. He made the deal with the company. But there was a miscommunication. They fired too soon. Afterwards, they assumed I'd been in on it. They offered me everything they'd offered him. Yes, I took it. And I took your blame too. Never told, did I? Let you keep your memory of your dear old Sarge. Cinders shakes her head and cocks her gun. No, not having it. What? That's just totally blanked out. I don't know what that says. F-U-C-K-I-N. I mean, it could be fucking without a G, so what fucking proof do you even have? The lieutenant spreads his paws on the table. I suspect the only proof left is in the vault. I'll give you my number regardless. I would ask you spare me until you've entered it, at least. In her paws, Cinder's gun wobbles. Hmm. Okay, well, they might use this opportunity to just... I mean, they could just escape and go who knows where, and we'll probably never be able to find them again, but... Let's check the vault first. Convince Cinders to spare the lieutenant. Maybe he shouldn't be shot dead. Grim acceptance. Cinder's claw curls around the trigger. Her whiskers tremble. The lieutenant pours himself a last cup of tea. Five sugars. Bang. Several rats jump. The parsimonious chairman swears. Cinders is fired into the desk. Get his number, she says between clenched teeth, before scurrying out of the office. The lieutenant takes a last sip. Let me come with you. The company won't let me stay after this fuss. I'll give you the number once I'm on board. It leads you straight out of the factory, dismissing questions from colleagues with inventive lies. The whole brigade are gathered around Cinder's nest of spent bottles and old journals. All eyes are on her. She pads over to the lieutenant. His mustaches droop, but he meets her gaze. Here's the thing. I don't like you. I don't trust you. Cinder stands nose to nose with him. But you were given a number, and you've shared it with us. We'll see this to the end. All of us. Just don't try anything. The lieutenant nods. Of course, Cinders. Cinders turns away. The Rat Brigade is ready to head for London. Head to London to open Sarge's vault. And we have no more business here in Port Prosper. So let's go. Let's see if we can get past customs. Present ourselves. Conceal. 
Oh, 100% chance of success. Huh. I thought having so many items would... Uh, like, make it harder. I remember that, like, the first time it was a 90% chance of success. I don't... I'm not sure why it's 100% now. Anyway. Guaranteed success, so... Not much drama there. Let's go first class. Get that tear down a little bit. It's at 13%. 0% now. The Temptation of Red Honey. Oh no. Sticky red stains in the cargo hold tell you that the crew have been indulging in your stash of red honey, slipping away in the night into distant memories and dreams of other worlds. The perpetrators are not hard to uncover. They're the ones briefly looking relaxed amongst the horrors of the high wilderness. Hmm. Set a watch or make an example of them. 62% chance of success. Let's set a watch. Ah, failure. Oh no, I lost two firkins of red honey. Oh, that sucks. I didn't think about that it might be like dangerous to transport it. Aside from the revenue men and all that. Your guards do a poor job of protecting your red honey. Possibly they're dipping into it themselves. The crew unites in silence, giving you no option but to let it go. Shit. God, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and get more red honey. I really want to finish that prospect. You get a huge bonus when you finish it. Arriving at the mausoleum to deliver the red honey now. For you, I guess that was an instant cut, but for me it was like a good 20 minutes or so. I cut out everything that I did along the way, just the small stuff, you know, like fighting the random dreadnoughts and uh, you know, random homesteads and stuff like that. Oh, one of the things that happened, by the way, when I went back to uh, Titania to get more red honey, they actually had another smuggling prospect for red honey to the mausoleum. So I have two of them. And not just not just that I have two of them. Uh, here it is. But the second one that I got is to deliver nine red honey. So I've got six. I filled up with as much as I can because God knows I need it for all these two prospects. But yeah, uh, Mausoleum is very red honey hungry. Let's finish the one that only requires five. Thousand profit directly from that, plus a bonus of another thousand profit. Gained a reputation with the smugglers. I now have two, a spark snuffer and a candle choker. Cool, I guess. Sounds like a nice rank. And then I can't put it in the, the bank or anything like that. I actually tried, by the way. Realized I couldn't, and that makes sense, because that would allow you to subvert customs if you could just put it in the bank and then go get it at the hub area in a different world. So, it's either just jettison it, or get rid of it right here. So they need eight more. A bargain of crockery. I already have so much crockery that I got at Port Prosper, hanging out with the, the servants or something like that. It's the second time that's happened where they just give me eight crockery. There's some more. Okay, uh, what can I do here? I don't remember. Attending a funeral. Few mourners are willing to brave the long journey through the reach to say goodbye to a loved one. Visitors are welcome to the extra chairs in the mausoleum's many chapels, provided they carry themselves appropriately. It's a calming way to spend a few hours, basking in lives well-lived, or taking solace in still having a future. Attend a miser's funeral or attend a deathless funeral. Costs 100 sovereigns. What does that do? 
The funerals of those joining the deathless are rare. Privileged onlookers are invited to attend when they occur for their own betterment. Interred in state, a young baronet smiles with delight as he receives his bounty of hours. His funeral vestments are silvered velvet, his sepulcher polished marble. He shares the last of his wine cellar with all present, before he's led away by the engraved mourner to his new and final residence. You've encountered one of the Empress's deathless courtiers. You've gained favor. Good, and we're without terror. Let's get a port report. Contemplate the dead sun. What did that do again? I think that gained a terror, didn't it? Yeah. But it gives me something, too. The vision of the heavens. One vision of the heavens for five terror. I guess that's worth it. Yeah, five terror is not much. Memorial to the Prince Consort. I've been here before. This will reduce terror. Deliver uncanny specimens so you get access to the upper gallery. I've done that before. Oh, Immaculate Souls will give me a private viewing of the tomb. This will reduce a significant amount of terror. Good to know. This will reduce a moderate amount. I only have 5%. So, let's do the cheap one. Cost 3 sovereigns. Reduce terror by 1%. <laughs> I think I've done this before. Yeah, we've read that before. Return to the nave. Approach the deathless. We have their favor a little bit. Oh, I can do this one. I've not spoken with the Chamberlain. I need to not have the ambition. The Martyr King's Cup. Not having any moonlight beckons. And I needed one favor bestowed. Yeah, let's do that. The Chamberlain presides over the affairs of the mausoleum. He is seniority of the sepulchre and rarely meets with visitors. The Dismal Chamberlain. Your attempts to meet with the Chamberlain are met with relentless ob obfuscation. His secretary reschedules the meeting eight times, eventually arranging it for six days ago. You even try waiting all day outside the Chamberlain's office, but he does not appear. His duties include regulation of time in the mausoleum, where the deathless wallow in generous pensions of hours. However, the clocks are not keeping the same time. Has something happened? Finally, you manage to corner the engraved mourner and press him for answers. The Chamberlain is no longer in residence, he replies curtly. We don't dwell on the matter. We suggest you follow suit. The Chamberlain's absence. The chamber Chamberlain is missing. Perhaps this merits further investigation. It does indeed. Fascinating. I wonder how we follow up on that. Can we speak with someone else here? 56% chance to speak with the Duchess Incarnadine. Success. A second Tamora. The Duchess would be a small figure were it not for the mounds of silk and brocade that comprise her dress. She glides along the flagstones, a great train of scarlet cloth following her like the telltale trail of blood in a penny dreadful. Today she's menacing the footmen, press ganging them into her mock battles in the Tower Carmine. Fatalities are rare in her battles, maimings are not. She gives you a red lipped smile. A footman intervenes and introduces you. She's pleased to encounter a genuine captain, and quizzes you on all the battles you fought in the wilderness. The gorious details she demands you linger on. She parts with you only reluctantly. I've gained favor again. Entertain a request from the macabre counselor. The cheery registrar gives you a note and a worried smile. The macabre counselor has requested your attendance, an honor rarely granted the legally living. Several footmen are on hand to escort you from the nave and through the oak paneled doors that lead down to the catacombs of silence, where the macabre counselor resides. Black candles burn in silver candelabras. Fading ta tapestries molder on the walls. In glass cabinets, bones of saints and sinners are displayed with gloomy relish. 
The macabre counselor is in a maudlin mood, regaling you with stories of her youth and musing wistfully on past regrets. I have only one worth mentioning. My daughter. The Empress saw fit to take her from me, as a punishment, I suppose. She could be terribly petty, good Vicky. She examines you speculatively. I wish to have my daughter returned to me. Fulfill this commission and I shall bequeath upon you a great reward. Sure. Accept her commission. You are partial to a good reward. It occasionally gets you into trouble. A courtly hostage. She is a hostage at Perdurance, kept to ensure my discretion. She hands you several charcoal sketches of her daughter. A pretty, presumptuous heiress with dark eyes and a curly lock of her brown hair. I have an agent in place to assist and to conceal my daughter's escape. You will need invitations to access the half-light mask to effect a rescue. I only have three to hand. It is likely you will need to secure more. Your mind returns to her use of the word hostage. An odd choice. Perdurance is said to be a place of endless delights where the children of society's elite dally in luxury. Surely it shouldn't be too much trouble to rescue one spoiled presumptuous heiress from the lap of opulence, even if it, as it were, the Empress's lap. Yes, hostage. I don't really doubt that they're actually a hostage. Perdurance is creepy. I've got nine invitations to Perdurance. That should be enough to do anything I want to do, I think. Ah, I can investigate the Chamberlain's disappearance. Okay, well, this episode is going on super long, so I think I'm going to actually end it here. So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to investigate the Chamberlain's disappearance.